When we use image views, SwiftUI knows to look inside your asset catalog to find the artwork inside there. It even automatically adjusts it so it loads the correct picture for the current device screen resolution. That's a whole at 2x and at 3x stuff we looked at earlier. For other types of data like text file, we need more work on our behalf. This applies even if you have a specific format like a XML or a JSON file, it takes the same work regardless of what you're trying to load. Now when Xcode builds our whole iOS app into a finished thing, it creates what's called a bundle. This has happened on all Apple's Apple's platforms, including macOS. It allows the system to place all the files for a single app in one position. That means the binary code, the actual compiled Swift code we wrote, plus all the artwork, and any extra files we want all in one single folder, .app has a name. In the future, as your skills grow, you'll actually learn how you can include multiple bundles in a single app. So it allows you to write things like Siri extensions or iMessage apps or widgets and so much more, all inside a single iOS app bundle that comes from the App Store. Now, although these all get included in our App Store download, that single bundle, these other bundles are actually stored separately from our main app bundle, which is the main iOS app and its resources, just put together in one big directory. Now, all this matters, right? It matters because it's common to want to look in a bundle for a particular file you know you placed there. This uses a data type called URL, which stores exactly what you might expect. It might store www.hackingwithswift.com, for example, a web URL. However, URLs are much more powerful than just storing web addresses. They also store the locations of files, for example, which is why they're useful here. Let's start writing some code in our content view. If you want to read the URL for a particular file in our app bundle, you want to use the method bundle.main.url. If the file exists, it'll be sent back to us. Here you go, here's the URL for that file. Otherwise, we get back nil. So we'll get an optional URL back. So in our uh, content view here, we're gonna write func test uh, bundles. And then we'll say, if let file URL is bundle.main.url for resource with extension. That one there. So we're looking for, I'll just use some file, for example, extension txt. So try and find some file txt, some file .txt in our app bundle. And if that succeeds, then we found the file in our bundle. Now really what's inside this URL does not matter. iOS uses paths that are impossible to guess. Our app lives in its own self-contained sandbox. Don't try and read files out of it. That's your little bit of work there. Once we have this URL though, we can load it into a string by using a special initializer, string contents of. We give this thing any file URL, and it'll send back a string containing the contents of that file if it can be loaded. If it can't be loaded, it will throw an error. So you've got to handle this with either try or try question mark correctly. So I'll say something like, uh, if let file contents equals try question mark string contents of that file URL. If we're here, then we found the file in our bundle and we loaded the file into a string. And once you have that file content string, you can do whatever you want with it. It's just a string.